I want to continue this morning on faith. I want to just uh, share a few scriptures that I shared last week just to build that, uh, lay that foundation again uh, so that we can just move on. And uh, I'd like to just re- remind you about 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. It says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe this morning that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're an overcomer. Amen? You know, a lot of people are trying to be and wanting to be and, and, and all these other things. But if we're already been made an overcomer, if God has already put something inside of us, the measure of faith that would allow us to break through and overcome and triumph over every lie, every obstacle, every mountain, everything that, that comes against you, I, I believe that, that then we can start to not just come from behind, but we can stand in the front of this thing and know who we are. One of the great secrets, I believe, and one of the great mysteries is that people learn to know who they are. What God has really deposited in us. We, I believe that we are more than conquerors. Do you believe that today? What is faith really? Faith is knowing that we are more than conquerors. Faith really is knowing that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Faith is knowing that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Faith is knowing that, that God goes before us. And if God before us, who can be against us? Faith is really understanding what Jesus did at the, cro- at the cross of Calvary. What God did to Satan when he raised Christ from the dead. And, and that's our place. That's our position. We're not coming uh, as, a, as a people that are, that are broken and distraught and no hope and out of, a, out of a hopelessness. No, we're coming from above. We're coming from another portion where God has made everything available to us that we need to triumph in life. And today that if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God has put something on the inside of you that will cause you to triumph and overcome over the works of the enemy. But if you don't know that, if you don't realize that, well, then we go around like a pauper. We've all heard the story of the man that went overseas in in a ship and he paid his ticket price. And at the end of the, he took a lot of cheese and crackers with him and he ate those on the journey. And uh, the last day there, he thought he saw all the other people going to the dining room and eating lobster and, and steaks and all the beautiful food. And he was, you know, he was thinking, man, I've only, and he thought, well, what I'll do is the last day, I'm going to shout myself one of those meals. And he went into the verser, the verser of, the, of the ship and said, how much will it cost me to go into that restaurant that all those people are going into and have one of those great meals? He said, nothing. He said, what? He said, it's, you paid for it in your ticket. And you see, I believe that a lot of Christians go without because we don't know what Jesus Christ really paid for. He paid for our total deliverance. Do you believe that? He, total, he paid for our total freedom and, and liberty and, and, and He paid an amazing price. And I, and I believe that Jesus gets great joy when He sees His people rising up saying, hey, I can do this. I, I can experience this. I am the healed. I am the delivered. So I want to speak this morning about the power of faith, knowing what the power of faith really is. Uh, We have more going for us than we sometimes realize. Can you say an amen to that? In Acts 1.8 it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. When do we receive this power? We receive it when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, not You don't receive it at the gym. You don't receive it, as a lot of people think, with much learning. You receive something dynamic and so powerful when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But you see, if we don't realize that, well, we're always striving, we're always looking, we're always wanting something there, and we're wondering why we can't receive it, it's because we've already got it. (laughs) And God wants you to activate it and motivate it and start to use what God has put on the inside of us. And until that happens, nothing much will change. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, the Bible, it says, have faith in God's Word. See, faith in God's Word releases this power. Faith in God's Word releases power. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says, but without faith... It is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe, number one, that he is. 
He is God. Believe that He is all powerful. Believe that nothing is too difficult for God. He is supreme. Now, the one that we serve is far above the devil, amen? <laughs> he is more powerful than any other force on this planet. He is God. He is the creator. Number two, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You've got to go after God. Those who diligently seek him. Can I say this, friends? That I believe that the passion that is in your heart for God is the measure that God can measure back to you. If we, if we think that we can just take God for granted and, and just give God a little hallelujah, praise the Lord, and that God's just going to open the windows of heaven and pour out upon us. No, I want to tell you for thousands of years, people have been doing that and nothing much has changed. But I believe what God is doing is He's creating on the inside of us an ever-increasing passion for God Himself. Amen. That, friend, when we, when we come and, and when, when we begin to worship, when we begin to, to lift up our voices, that we, we're, not just, we're not just singing a song, but somehow or other we're wanting to get our whole body, mind, soul, and spirit involved in what I'm doing. And I want to lift up my voice and I want to sing the praises of God. And I want to break some stronghold. I want to break into that will cause the very presence of God to flow down all over me. I, I believe that, that God is creating something on the inside of people. And, and friend, can I say this? It's no coincidence today that as we begin to worship and as we begin to pray, uh, praise this morning, that a, a sense of a heaviness came into this meeting. It's because today I'm going to preach on something there that co will cause us to break uh, that stronghold. But it's like the enemy knows and the enemy comes in to try to stop. But I want to tell you, the enemy knows what will happen when the people of God let go and let God be God and open up their hearts and break through the strongholds, break through the things. And I know in your mind, a lot of you people are saying this morning, we didn't worship this morning. We didn't do this this morning. No, because there was a spirit of heaviness that we're going to break in the realm of the spirit. And at the end of this meeting today, we're going to worship our King. We're going to lift up our voices because no devil is going to rule and reign over us us in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, friends, we can't just let our hands hang down when these sort of things come. We are in a war. Do you believe, do you believe that today? There is a war in the realm of the Spirit that's going on, and you and I need to realize that. And when the enemy comes in, we've got to be able to lift up a standard against the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take authority over it. And, and, and you punch through and you push through and you break the enemy's strongholds. Friend, I want to tell you today, we are already more than conquerors. God is a good God. The devil is always trying to give people the wrong image of God. I don't know what a lot of people do. If you go around and you talk to people, they've got, a, they've got opinions. They've got a, an opinion of who God is. But I want to tell you, friends, He is not the God that I know, what they say, what they talk about. The God that I know is a good God, amen. And the enemy there would like to sow into the minds of people uh, that our God is not what He really is. Our God is a good God, amen. Turn to somebody and say, our God is a good God. Or is the devil's always trying to give people the wrong image of God. He tries to make God out of some kind of monster who wants to strike down every sinner and send them to hell. That is not what my God is like, amen? Or like some angry judge, always in a bad mood, always angry. Our God is not always angry, amen? Or like a school teacher that I once knew. <laughs> it's not so, amen? He's not like that. I had a school teacher there that just looking for people to do something wrong so he could slap you over the, over the knuckles with his ruler, amen? <laughs> he loved to get people out the front with his cane in the old days with the cane. And I want to tell you, there's a lot of young people that think the same about me when I became the principal <laughs> of the school. You see, now the image that we have of, of God has to change. 
That's why God sent Jesus to the earth to show the world what God was really like. To show us what God was really like. Jesus was the express image of who God is. If you want to know what God's like, read your Bible. Jesus said in John 15 verse 19, it says, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself but what He sees the Father do. Whatever He does, the Son does also in like manner. Whatever God did, Jesus did. When Jesus came on the planet, And he started to move on this earth and he saw somebody there that needed a a deliverance. He just said, well, what would my father do? (laughs) And he did that, amen. He saw a a need, so he just, just used his faith. See, God had, Jesus had to use his faith just like you and I need to use our faith. I want you to open up your Bibles, if you would, to the book of James. James, the book of James. I think I finished that one. (laughs) Thank you, sir. James 1, uh, I'm just going to read 13 from verse 13 of James 1. It says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when does the desire has conceived, it brings forth, uh, it gives, sorry, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my loved brethren. Every good gift, everybody say this, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father. Amen. Every good gift. Every good gift comes from God. God is a good God. God wants to bring good gifts to us. He wants to bring good things. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father. The Father wants to bless us. Where did Jesus come from? You can't say from Mary's womb. Jesus came really from heaven, amen? Jesus came from heaven. Where did the Holy Spirit come from? Came from heaven, amen. Something from heaven. In Acts uh, 2, let's have a look at the book of Acts, chapter 2. Let's remind ourselves of these scriptures. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them divided tongues of fire and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What an amazing phenomena. What an amazing time. A sound, a sound came from heaven. Something from heaven came upon them. Here's a bunch of people, a bunch of guys there that were fishermen, tax collectors, different people, just ordinary people. But what happened to them? Something from heaven came down and came upon them. Not only did it come upon them, but it came within them. And that which was within them started to come out of them. And they started to speak with other tongues and they started to glorify God. And they started to worship and they started to to do exceedingly great things. They started to heal the sick because of this great divine power that came upon them. They're all filled with the power of God. Friend, today we underestimate what is already on the inside of us. You have been filled with the power of God. Hallelujah. You are not a wimp. You're not a loser. You're filled with the power of God. Something from heaven came upon me. I want to to say this as bold as I can. Something from heaven came upon you. Something from heaven came upon me and filled me with power. Filled me with the Holy Ghost. Filled me with power. You and I have been endured with power from where? From on high. A direct gift to you from God. A direct gift to you from God. I want, to, I want to just linger here a little bit that we can understand that our Heavenly Father knows what is best for you and I. And He gave you a gift of power. Not so as you go around like a powerhouse, but you can take authority and you can rule over the enemy. 
Because the enemy comes in to try to destroy you. The Bible says that the thief comes not but to rob, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The enemy would come and and try to steal from us. You and I have been endured with this power from on high. An amazing thing that God has done for us. And we need to live in that. The purpose of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is found in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And listen, listen to what it says. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he said, And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. On the day of Pentecost, God poured out His Spirit on flesh. Amen. God, something from heaven came upon us and came into us, into humanity. It is not just a once, it is a continual flow. There is a mighty river that's flowing from God into humanity that we might overcome and triumph over the enemy. And it says in the last days, it will come to pass that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. This is Peter's explaining what has happened. And then it says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And on my men servant and on my main servant, I will pour out my spirit in these days and they shall prophesy and I'll show wonders in the heaven. It appears to me that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was to bring the supernatural realm of God to planet earth, was to bring a supernatural uh, presence of God into his people so that they would prophesy so that they would dream dreams. I see a young man, he came to me one day and he started to talk to me over a cup of coffee. And as he started to talk to me, I could hear the dream that was in his heart. I could hear the vision that he had. And that's what God says, they would have vision and they would dream dreams. And as he dreamed that dream, as he spoke that dream out into my ears, and as I began to hear it, I could hear the passion that was on the inside of him. And I felt in my heart, let's see what God wants to do with this boy. Let's give him a platform. Let's give him something there that he can work with. He's over there just wanting to do something. But friend, everybody needs a platform. Everybody needs a something to work with. Amen. How many people are prepared to have a go and see what God does? Because God, you see, the outpouring of the Spirit is not just so that we can have a little twinkle time, a little shandaramundi and a little hallelujah. But I want to tell you, it's to empower you. It's to impact you. It's so that we will start to prophesy. So we will start to speak the Word of God. So that the anointing of God can get around our lives. So that we can open up something in the realm of the Spirit. That the King of glory can come down. That the King of glory can come in and get involved. Because I want to tell you, friends, if something doesn't happen very soon. I don't know what's going to happen to our young people. Today they are destroying their lives. The the suicide rate is alarming. That What is happening with, with young girls and young boys today with drugs and goodness knows what else. Kids that are just destroying their lives. I want to tell you, God says He wants to raise up a standard. Amen. And so what, how does he do that? He's not, he's not just going to come down from heaven and do it. No, he's going to get a young man and he's going to put a, a young woman and a young, some other people there and he's going to put a dream in their heart and he's going to put a passion on the inside of them. They're going to wake up dreaming dreams. They're going to wake up prophesying. They're going to wake up speaking the Word of God. Friend, we don't want to prophesy twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. We want to prophesy the Word of God. Amen. God said, this is what I'm going to do in the last days. In the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. And signs and wonders and miracles are going to be performed in the name of Jesus because of this great outpouring of the spirit. It is not meant that we sit around just playing church. You've got to get up off your blessed assurance. <laughs> Glory to God. Friend, if only we could get to understand what God has given to us. What God has invested in us. And He expects us to do something about it. Amen. I, I believe that. Do you believe that as well? Sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will s- see visions. I don't know. This man has got a vision of not just a few. He's got a vision of thousands of youth. 
Amen? We might be, I'll, I'll start with three and got six. <laughs> but man, that's the beginning, amen? Don't despise small beginnings. Men servants, and you know, I don't know about you, old men are dreaming dreams. I, I'm dreaming a dream of revival. I had lunch with a guy the other day and he said that while I was preaching last week, he looked at his wife and he said, he really believes this. <laughs> hey? He really he believes, hey friend, I believe this. I am not trying to run you up some tree to chop it down. I believe this, hallelujah. I believe in a revival fire that's going to burn and burn and burn and burn, hallelujah. I believe for young people to get born again and old people to get born again, ushered into the kingdom. I believe that the church is going to be the most powerful force on earth. Glory to God. I like that, amen. I like it when people say, I, I think he believes it. Turn to somebody and say, I think he believes it. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I am a believer. Not in what Neil says, but in what the Word of God says. Not in what I say, but at what God says. Amen. God says he's going to have a revival. I believe he's going to have a revival. I believe the Holy Spirit's given us to us to open up the supernatural. God doesn't have power. He is power. God does, doesn't have a bit of power that, he, that, he, that He's going to give out like, like a little bit of oil or a little bit of this or a little bit of money. A little bit. No, God doesn't have power. He is power. Hallelujah. God doesn't have love. He is love. Hallelujah. God doesn't have mercy. He is mercy. God doesn't have healing. He is healing. I want to tell you, if you can get a hold of God, if you can but touch the hem of His garment, and that's what I'm talking about today, friends. If we're just going to twinkle toe, playing with tiny Tim, Tim toeing through the tulips, well, I want to tell you, we are wasting our time. We are wasting your good Sunday morning. You might as well be down at the beach Playing whoopie doo down there, amen. <laughs> True, is that okay? <laughs> hey, now come on, is that that? We might as well be if we're not prepared. But friend, I want to tell you, there's something that's got to happen. There's something that's got to happen as we begin to worship. We're going to go through a rush. I step forward. It doesn't matter if you can't sing in tune. Glory to God. Half our musicians can't either. But that's okay. <laughs> but we make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Amen. I've, we've, I've heard us start in the wrong key and end up three keys later, we find it, amen? We find the lost chord. <laughs> I have to cancel all the musicians and singers now. <laughs> That'll, that's wrecked next week. <laughs> he doesn't, you know, if we just touch Christ, if we, if we, if we can push through, if, if, we, if we can, in our worship, in our praise, in our, in our, in our whole attitude, in our whole, whole whatever it is, if we could just get out there and, and touch Him, touch Him, touch the hem of His garment in our worship as we, as, we, as we just want Him. I don't want anything. I just want Him. Touch the hem of his God. Virtue will flow. Hallelujah. And we'll walk up to the, the, somebody like Quentin. Quentin, get off your bed and walk. Hallelujah. <laughs> Didn't happen, but anyhow, one day it will. <laughs> it will, amen. It will, it will, it will, it will. I've been dying to do that. For, I was living to do that for a long time. <laughs> God. <laughs> I got a, some friend from new lady there. I'm sorry, lady, but this is normal for us. <laughs> it's okay. Have faith in God. Or better explained, have the God kind of faith. Jesus did what he saw his father do. He watched as God spoke in the beginning of time. Let there be light. My God, I tell you what. There, he would have, Jesus would have been watching there as God spoke those words. Let there be light. And Jesus, there would have been lightning. There would have been thunders. There would have been smoke. There would have been goodness knows what. And they didn't have to have a smoke machine. But there were stuff, lights, flashing, glory to God. The power as, as the wor worlds were fashioned and framed and and, and 
stars and galaxies and goodness knows what. Can you imagine? <laughs> and I, I can imagine, how'd you do that, Dad? I just spoke it. <laughs> how'd you do that? I just spoke it. I believed it. So when Jesus sees a dead person, he just does the same. He just speaks it. Get out. <laughs> the guy got out. <laughs> he was at a, at a wedding and they had run out of wine. He, well, they got us water, so he turned it into wine. Miracles. Just, just speak it. He didn't have to stamp his foot like we used to. Go home with a crook back. <laughs> One leg shorter than the other one. I drove it up past my shoulder blade one day. You don't have to spit. You don't have to shout. You, don't have, you just have to speak. A whisper will do if you believe it. But see, what, I, what I'm saying is Jesus just did what he saw his father do. And then he had the gumption to say to us, now you can do what I do. I do what the father does. Now you can do what I do. Speak the word. Believe the word. Have faith in God. Have God kind of faith. The worlds were fashioned. What an amazing display that would have been. I want to ask you a question today. Is anything too hard for God? So Jesus came from heaven to earth. The Holy Spirit came upon him and he was filled with the mighty power of God. By faith in God, he touched many things and they changed. I want to just close. Do you realize? Do you realize that God has given you something that is so, so amazing when He filled you with the Holy Spirit? He gave you the language of heaven. This language came from heaven. The Holy Spirit power came from heaven down onto mankind and it flooded humanity and it came within humanity and then out of humanity came this language. It's called tongues. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the devil was there saying, what are they saying? Can I say this? The language that God has given every one of us. John, the language that God has given to you is a unique language. That it is a pure language. Can you understand that? It is a pure language. It is not our, ability, our trying to express or I, I am here today with just trying to express something, but I am limited by my vocabulary. I'm limited by my words. But I want to tell you, when I start to speak in the Holy Ghost, when I stand there and I lift up my voice and I start to speak in other tongues, uh, out of me comes a pure language, a language there that the devil does not understand, a language there that confuses him. But it's a language that is a pure language that goes from humanity straight up into heaven and we're speaking mysteries under God, hallelujah. We're, we're speaking things there. Do you know this morning that as we begin to worship and as we begin to sing, in the spirit as we lift up our voices and start to sing in other tongues I want to tell you there's a pure uh, worship that's starting to go up friend I want to say when we're up here in, in the natural I love you Jesus I love you I will but I want to tell you when that supernatural power of God hits you and you begin to worship your king and as you begin to worship in the spirit I want to tell you there's something beautiful there's something so so magnificent you speak in words that you you can never imagine. You're, you're touching God in such an amazing way. Can you understand what I'm saying this morning? 
That's why the devil is trying to get tongues out of the church. That's why he's trying to get communion out of the church. That's why, he's, because I want to tell you, they are the foundational truths. And I want to tell you, if you want to touch the hem of his garment, I want to tell you, don't care about the person sitting beside you. Don't care about somebody else, but lift up your voice, hallelujah, and worship the King and Spirit and speak in other tongues and worship Him because you're speaking a, a love language to God. There's something there that you can touch the hem of His garment. You can ride the thermals of the Spirit and it'll take you up higher and higher and higher and beyond the natural ability of man. I want to tell you, man can say a lot of things, but I want to tell you, as we begin to worship God in the realm of the Spirit, it will take you up. It will lift you up. I've been in places, friends, when I've heard the voices of angels, when we sing even a different melody, when the musicians say, I don't know, we weren't playing that chord, but as they hear the recording, there was a different sound because there's something of the supernatural that connects, amen. Friend, I'm not talking about just playing church. I'm talking about the move of the Spirit of God. Little church over in England, Nancy and I know it well. These people were just honoring and worshiping and honoring, singing in the spirit. And they said all of a sudden there was a sound, a sound that came into that place. They had it on tape. Many musicians listened to it. They said those sounds and those, that music that was being played was is not humanly possible to play those notes. How many people know that God's got a sound? He's got a music. He's got something up there. When we go, oh, shakabundi, 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands singing with a loud voice, hallelujah. And the crescendo and the noise and the smash of the cymbals and the, and the music, I want to tell you, it's just going to take us into a realm of the Spirit. I don't know about you, but that's where I'm going. I want you to thump somebody in the ribs and say, he really believes that. He believes that. I believe it, friend. I don't want to just be bound by the natural. I want to go into the supernatural. I don't want to be bound by natural words. I want to go into the supernatural, hallelujah. I don't want to be just here playing around. I want to go into the realm of the Spirit where the miracles are, where virtue will flow, hallelujah. Oh. Holy Spirit. The most important thing for you and I to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. Then be, be filled with the power. And then use this divine gift. The, the gift of tongues is a divine gift that God gave me. Gave you. Amen. Gave me. Gave it to you. Lift up our voices. Can you stand with me right now? Can I ask us to do something this morning? Can we just all come out the front? I want us to touch God this morning. I want us to worship Him. Just worship Him. Come, come on, come folks.